Welcome to day 6 of the 2023 Advent of Code. So today's prompt was really simple, actually a bit too simple and I was thrown off by yesterday's. And so I spent too much time on part 2 finding a more optimal solution, which wasn't really necessary, and so I ended up actually doing pretty poorly on the later board as a result. So let's look at this problem. We have a bunch of boat races, and for each race there is a time and a distance. The distance is the record's uh, performance for any boat in the race. So what we're trying to do is go farther in each race than the current record holder, so strictly farther. And so we want to get the best distance. We're actually using toy boats, and there's a button on top of the boat that charges up the boat as we hold it, and when we release it, it moves forward. So in this case, the first race lasted 7 ms, and the uh, record holder went 9 millimeters. The boat starts off with zero speed, and for each millisecond that we hold it down, the speed increases by one millimeter per millisecond. And so once we release it, for the remainder of the race time, it will move forward. So the holding time counts as part of the race. For example, if we hold for two milliseconds in a seven millisecond race, then the boat will have a speed of two and get five milliseconds to move, giving it a total distance of 10. So since the record is nine millimeters, we have four different ways to win here. We can hold it for two, giving us a distance of 10, 3 or 4 both giving us a distance of 12, and 5 giving us a distance of 10. So basically it's just the amount of time we hold multiplied by the amount of time we don't hold. So if we take a look at the input, this actually reveals a lot about how we're supposed to solve this problem. This input is extraordinarily small. So we can just try every possible hold time because we're only looping up to maximum like less than 100. So let's first take our inputs. We're going to read in the entire input. And then for each line in this, we're going to take these numbers and get a list of integers out of it. So we're going to split the line on the colon and take the index one to get this part here. Then we're going to split it on white space. And then we're going to do list map int to get an array of integers. So now we have two arrays of integers, the first line and the second line. Which will give us this. And so we can just use destructuring to map it to time and distance, like so. Or let's call them times and distances. So now our final answer that we're supposed to give is the product of the margins of error, where the margin of error is how many different ways we can win the race. So let's just call that n, and then at the end we'll just print n. It starts at 1 because we want the product and not the sum. So now for each time and distance in zip of times and distances. So what zip does is it basically goes through to, uh, multiple arrays column by column. Um, we're going to say margin equals 0, and at the end we're going to do n times equals margin. So now we can just try every possible hold time. So for hold in range up to time, this doesn't include time itself, but we don't need to care because if we hold it down for the entire race time, then the boat can't move forward. Then we can just say margin if hold times time minus hold, which is the distance that the boat will travel, is greater than the record distance, we can increase our margin by one. And that's all we need to do for part one. For part two, we just ignore the spaces, and then there's only one race. So we actually don't need to change this logic at all, because the input is actually not large enough for it to matter. So if we get rid of these spaces, we see that our input is only about 60 million. That's not a fast loop, but it's much faster than writing out a smarter solution would be. And so we can just take our part one solution, and then just add a simple modification to the input parsing to get rid of the spaces. So after splitting, we're just going to join back on the empty string, and this will convert them into just one number. And because we're using map here, we can either get rid of the int, like, sorry, get rid of the map and just do int like so. That'll give us time and distance on their own, but then we need to do a bit of uh, modification here to get rid of this outer loop. So I find it easier to just wrap this part in an array like so. And so now times and distances 
are just singleton arrays. And so now we can just run this and it'll take a couple of seconds, but again, this is faster than writing a smarter solution would be. So there are a couple of different ways you can do this more intelligently that will be faster, not to actually get your submission into the website, but faster runtime. And I'll leave these as exercises, but two ways you can consider approaching this are starting in the middle and binary searching. And you can also just solve the quadratic equation yourself. This thing here, if you solve for equality, you can get a pretty rough estimation. Another interesting thing to note is that you actually do not need to calculate both sides of the range because it's always symmetrical. If the race lasts for, let's say, 15 seconds, then holding for 3 seconds and releasing for 12 is the same as holding for 12 and releasing for 3. That should be pretty simple to see why. In any case, I think the most valuable takeaway from a problem like this, because it's a bit too simple for us to be learning too much from here, is to always be careful what the input size is. Before approaching a naive solution, always make sure that the input isn't too large that you can't use it. This was applicable to yesterday. And before starting a more algorithmic solution, always check that the input isn't small enough that you don't need to do it. That's applicable to today. In any case, I hope you learned something, and thank you for watching.